We're going to look at the CSS calc function in this video. And the first thing that we're going to do is build exactly what you can see here, but we're going to build it without the calc function and then see how the calc function makes this extremely easy. And what's so special about this little banner or this alert is that when I pull this in, it does have 100% width, but the sides stay at a pixel value. Now, traditionally, that's really hard to achieve because you would have to do all sorts of things or maybe make the container slightly bigger. Um, it can get really confusing easily. Uh, but we're going to look at how easy such a simple thing like this can be made with the calc function. So let's go ahead and look at how we traditionally might build this and then we'll go ahead and look at some of the calc theory and then apply it to this. So here's the document that I'm going to be working with, uh, just a basic doc layout here and I've got my main.css style sheet linked in and currently there are no styles at all here. So opening up our browser we have absolutely nothing at the moment. So let's build the markup for this and we'll see how this works. So I'm going to create a div with a class of alert and in here I'm just going to type some text. So this is an alert, you better pay attention. So something silly like that. Okay, so when we refresh now we just have text. Let's start to style this up just to see how it would look uh, originally. So let uh, us target that alert. We'll give this a width of 100%. And we will, in fact, we won't give it a margin just yet. Uh, we'll set the background color here. Let's say tomato. It's quite nice. And we'll set the color of the text in here to white. And we'll give this some padding as well. So we'll say 20 pixels. What we're also going to do is use the box sizing property and set this to border box to alter the box model so the padding doesn't affect the width or height, uh, the width of this element. Okay, so here's our alert. This looks fine, you know, it's it, it does its job. But what we want it to do is we want to have 50 pixels on this side and then 50 pixels on this side, exactly. So how might we do this? Well, we've got a width of 100%. We can't exactly say margin left 50 pixels and margin right 50 pixels uh, because that will result in the following. Oops, it's come off the page a little bit. Everything looks a little bit... Uh, messed up here if we take a look there you've got the you've got the 50 pixels there but the reason this isn't working is because the width still wants to be a hundred percent so there's another way that we can remedy this we can change the percentage as uh, instead so we could do say two percent on the margin on the left and two percent on the margin on the right and then we could obviously set this to 96 percent because obviously two add two is four uh, and uh, 96 had 4 is 100. So this works. It looks like the result we originally had. But when we get down to this size, can you see that the margins are increasing and decreasing? That might be fine for some people or some uh, projects. But in this case, I want the left and the right to maintain a 50 pixel width while still staying uh, 100%. So... There are ways that we can combat this. For example, at the moment, the outer container is the body. Let's just create a container here and let's place the alert inside of this container. So we could do something like this. So we've got our container. Let's apply some styles to our container and let's set the padding um, to 0, 0 and then we'll change the uh, padding here to 50 pixels. So this is top and bottom 0 um, and left and right 50 pixels. Um, so in this case we're going to get something like the following. So as I pull this in we get that 50 pixel maintained either side. Okay so that's fair enough. However what we actually want to do is we want to remove the need to rely on container like this and there are plenty of other uses for the calc function here but this is just one of the ways that it can help so let's uh, return to our original so we've got 100% width here let's take a look at what the calc function actually does first of all and while we're doing that we'll actually apply it to our width so I'm going to keep the 100% for browsers that don't support the calc function that's really that's really important particularly if you don't have a block level element and you are specifically defining something like display block and then you're setting the width of the element. So this time I'm going to rewrite, if you like, or, or uh, repeat the width property. So if the calc function here is not supported, it will revert back to the 100% width. So it's important to add, uh, keep in our fallback, whether this is a percentage or a pixel value. So inside of here we can add an expression which as you know is just something like one pixel 
plus one pixel, for example. So if, for example, I said I want this to be 50 pixels plus 50 pixels, you can imagine that the width of the element happens to turn out at 100% width, and uh, sorry, 100 pixels width, and you can see that our 100% width there is gone. So that's one way we can do things, but obviously doing that is absolutely useless because we could just do 100 pixels there and remove that altogether. There'd be no need to do this necessarily. But when percentages come into practice, this will automatically calculate the size things should be. So for example, we want the width to be 100%, we know that, but we want 50 pixels to be either side of the element. So all we need to do is minus 100 pixels off the entire width of it. By doing this, as the browser is resized, this will be automatically recalculated. Now at the moment, that's going to look like this. We've got a little gap here, but that's a 100% gap. Uh, sorry, a 100 pixel gap. Now we don't want this to be the case because we want this centered. So all I need to do here is add a margin of zero on the top and bottom add auto on the left and right and as you may know that will just center that element so we've now got this element with a hundred percent width but as we drag this in it's being automatically resized to take into account that it needs to minus a hundred pixels off the total width which is obviously 50 pixels either side so this is a really easy solution to a problem that you would have to add extra markup to or JavaScript maybe, heaven forbid. So there we go. We've used the calc function to calculate the width of an element and there are plenty more things you can do with this. So if you are developing something and you come across a, a problem like this, then you know that you can use the calc function to solve this. So that's it. That's a little example of the CSS calc function.